you. Okay. So remember, this is uh, this is gonna be included in your midterm exam. This is the last lesson which will be included in your midterm exam. Um, now, now we know certain things. Yeah, especially we know about the central limit theorem. So what does it state? Look, we know the sampling form of a normal distribution. Although it is a normal distribution, this one, this one is normal distribution, right? Although it's a normal distribution, but still uh, we can go further, we can skew, we can make it more like closer to the mean. Uh, when we will be doing the sampling distribution, our mean will become uh, mu x bar equal to mu and our dispersion will be a sigma x bar equal to sigma by under root n. And the center, uh, sampling distribution will be n equal to 4. We will have a wider. We already talked about this. So if let's say our mu is 50, so this is when n is smaller. If we increase n by four times, the variance will be of course decline because it will be skewed towards the mean. We already have talked about this thing uh, before as well. So the, the dispersion here is less, sir, than the disturb, uh, dispersion with the big one, right? If I uh, mark it with the red line, just like this. So this one is wider and it makes the shape different, right? So it was more skewed. Of course, it's with the central. So that's what the central limit theorem tells us. If you increase n, right, this sigma x bar sample mean will be, this will be lower, right? And it will become more and more normal with mean, right? Now, it becomes closer and closer to the population mean. This is how we convert into a standardized normal distribution. Now let's see an example. As you are, a, this is a standard normal distribution, which we have already talked about. So sampling distribution will be this one, standardized normal distribution with this one, with sigma one and mu zero. So these are the parameters we already know. They are here, the parameters are mu and sigma x bar, right? So this one and this one are the parameters. This is also normal distribution. This is also normal distribution, but we standardize the normal distribution through z-score, right? That's we already know. Now, let's say you are interested in a telephone operate operations, right? So there was there is a one lady who is an operation analyst for a telephone company, China Mobile or uh, Unicom or any other mobile company, right? So what does it do? What does it do? What does she do? Now, hmm? she's an operation anal analyst, and uh, we are uh, we were observing the long distance call, right? Long distance calls are normally distributed. So information first thing first, just see what information is given or what information you can extract from the question. That's really important. So average, that's the population mean, mu is eight. Which means, no, we don't know how many number of uh, calls, but the total number of calls, the average mean of a population is eight and the average sigma is two. Now, if you select a sample of 25, now this is small n, right? If you select the sample of uh, 25, what percentage of the sample means, so that's important, sample mean, uh, would be between 7.8 and 8.2. Now, you see, this is not about the probability of x. This is the probability of x bar we are interested in, 
that's the difference here according to the central limit theorem so what we need to do so again we uh, need to we can apply standardized normal distribution so here in this case if I write it correctly what will be the distribution it will be this is mu 8 right sigma is 2 and is 40 oh no then it's 25 now I have x is 7.8 and x2 is 8.2 let me take you to the board because the other things are more are clear than this one yeah yeah now let me again put the values on this time on the board so what what will we have we have mu which is given it we have n which is given 25 that's a sample and what we have, we have uh, sigma, which is given as a, sigma is given as 2, right? That's the information we have. Now, we have to calculate the probability of 7.8 is less than x bar is less than 8.2. Now, that's we are interested here. So, here we are talking about the sample mean this time. So, of course, when we're talking about the sample mean, we're going to use the different z-score. So, what we can do, we can just put the values. The rest of the process is the same. You already have the z-tables, right? So, what will be the z-value here? There will be two z-values. So, okay, let me first draw that. That's a mu equal to 8. That's x bar 1. That's x bar 2, which is 7.8, 8.2, and trusted in this area and this area. Just do the corresponding value. Of course, a standardized normal distribution, z equal to 0. Phi sigma is 1. So here, the Z1 value, we have to calculate the same thing, Z2 value. Z1 value will be negative and Z2 value will be in positive because this Z is 0. And then we see the corresponding value in the table. So what will be the Z1? Z1 will be X bar minus mu, X bar 1 minus mu upon sigma upon under root n because this is sigma x bar remember that's why we're gonna use this small n here um, if you solve it it will give you put this value the lower limit 7.8 minus 8 because all the things are given so um, sigma is 2 and under root 25 is 5 hmm? so if you solve it you will get um, 0 0.2 0.2 my into minus um, of course it's in minus so 0.2 times 2 and 5 will go up so it will cancel and it will come 1 so it will be probably giving you the value of 1 minus 1 yeah 0 0.1 so it will give you minus 1 so here the z value is minus 1 and similarly, because there is the same difference of two points, so if you put the Z2, it will give you also uh, 
the same value upon sigma upon under root n so here it's 8.2 minus 8 2 by 5 so it's going to be plus 1 so 0.2 Um, times 1, 10, and times 5. 2, 2, 1, 5 by 10 is 1 by 2 is equal to 0 0.5. Oh, so it's 0 0.5, not 1. Well, yeah, it's 0 0.5. Minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. So that's the value. You just uh, open the table. If you have the z table, you already have the z table. So just check the value and let me know what is the value of uh, against the z value against 0.5. You, you already have the z table, right? So if uh, okay, let me also open it. So the value of 0.5 is 0 0.1915. 0. This point is 0 0.1915. This area is 0 0.1915. This is also 0 0.1915. So this is minus, this is plus. So we are interested in this area. You just add this area. So 0 0.1915 and 0 0.1915. It gives you oh, 2, 3, 9, 9, 18, 1, and 3. So 0 0.3830. So the probability of this is 38.30% are the chances that the sample mean lie between 7.8 and 8. So now you can easily solve this one, right? With all this information, so that's how we deal with it. Uh, we will we are trying to say that uh, whatever the population distribution is, as a sample size, and if we const if we uh, construct uh, the distribution of these sample means, which is also known as sample distribution, and if n increases, it moves to normal distribution as per central limit theorem. Do you understand? So as n increases, it moves to the central limit theorem. Uh, it moves to the normal distribution. Now we will see some more example. So let me share the screen again with you. And this time we will see that how it going to work with the cam on. So this one, OK, yeah. Now you can see the screen as well. So as you see this one, yeah, and that's how you can get it. I did not, okay. Yeah, now it's working. Right, so that's when you go. So this will turn into this one. So if you see the shape, it will be, it should move because here and it's greater. Now, <laughs> what do you get? This is the value, the population distribution. Sigma is 10, mu is 50, mu f x bar equals to mu. Dispersion will be this one, sampling with replacement, then if you have n equal to 4, again, this is the first one. When n is 4, when n is 30, it will definitely change the shape. That's uh, for the non-normal population, if one is skewed. As I told you, the number of uh, people uh, I observed for, um, for the using of 5G technology in future. So central limit tells us uh, as sample size gets large enough, it's, if it's greater than 30 equal to 30, it's like this one. So here the sampling distribution becomes almost normal. Do you understand? Easy again. Now let's see this example.
so how to deal with this example so first what information you retrieve from this question that's a company we are not we are getting too much into this kind of uh, company's details what we see is uh, normally distributed okay that's that's what we needed mean we have mean mu is 50 uh, standard deviation is 0.25 Sigma is 0.25. Okay, let me change the color. So we have mean 50. Sigma is 0.25. So there should be N as well. What is the probability that the mean length of a sample of a four stem N equal to 4 is more than so probability of x bar mean because we are talking about the mean length so mean is uh, 0.10 so that's what we know i hope that you can easily solve this question right so draw this one you have mean mu 50 so if this is 50 and you want to uh, see the is it greater than 0 0.10 millimeter so you can find out the value so here it's like a two-way right so sigma is 0.25 so here it's like a two-way so we can we are interested in this one and this one all right so this information and this information here what will be this one this we are interested in so of course uh, mu is 50 which is which we we already know that mu of x bar equal to mu equal to 50 right uh, length of a 50 millimeter So here it will be like this one. You have sigma x bar equal to sigma upon under root n. Under root n is 4. So what is sigma? Sigma is 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 divided by 4. Under root 4 is 2. So you just solve these things and you will get the same kind of a structure so in really in a good way if I write it so I will have uh, mu equal to 50 which is equal to mu x bar and sigma x bar is gonna be 0 0.25 upon 2 and solve this one so it will be 200 so 1 by 4 this is 1 by 4 and if you solve it it gives you 2 point something right so calculate the value of z1 and z2 uh, here it's uh, plus 0.10 From the population mean of length of 50 millimeter so you have uh, z1 is x1 minus mu x bar from sigma x bar so you have to find out 49.98 minus 50 right upon 0 0.00 whatever the value of 1 by 4 here or point zero two something right so because we need we are interested in finding the probability of x bar is from 49.98 with x bar and 50.2 right no 50.1 
50.1 so it's point 0.10 so it's from 49.9 and 50.1 49.9 and 50.1 so that's what we are calculating this one so if it will be only more than then we use only one probability of x bar is greater than 50 plus 0.1 is 50.1 right so that's what we calculate so just put it into the, the formula and you can find out the value so that's an easy one i hope that you can do that now another one is the same thing almost similar thing right a quality here the distance is the, the things are different so here 50 millimeter is a mu that's our mu 0 0.002 is our sigma standard deviation and uh, n here what is the n Uh, if you read it, you will get, can you get uh, the n uh, normally distributed periodically selects a random sample of 4. This is n, right? Now you have uh, mu, uh, you have n, you have sigma, you can also get sigma x bar. Sigma upon n, under root n, right? So if you have these two things, then you can also get z which is x bar minus mu x bar upon sigma x bar so you have all these values this value you have this value you have x bar so what here x bar is it says that if the sample average is below 49.98 and more than 50.02 so this is the case it's more than 50.02 and it's less than 49.98 so this one you are interested in to calculate so i i think you have to find out z1 and z2 and i'm sure you can do it now and just see the value in the table right and because uh, we are interested in this area so we know this area is 0.5 so whatever the z value here after at the end just minus it with 0.5 and also minus it with 0.5 and then you can get it to do this these two values for this so here again this is the central limit theorem we are interested in that if n increases this leads to the uh, normal distribution now let's now now this one is important um yeah so you can also solve this one as well so here, um, average mean is 15.92, 15.98, uh, mu is this, sigma is 0 0.3, and n is, uh, so whose contents are supposed to be 16 ohms, right, so probability of x bar is greater than 16 that's we had to find out and what is the n n is missing so far the random sample of nine bottles so n is nine simple to so have n you have sigma so sigma x bar will be 0.3 by 3 so it will be 0.1 right 0 0.1 put the value 16 so z will be 16 minus 15.85 upon 0 0.1 and when you solve it you get it gives you 1.5 see the table value of 1.5 so table value will be 0 0.4332 if you solve it so this is uh, 0 0.4332 this is zero and this area is 0.5 we are interested in this area so 0 0.5 minus 0.4332 will give us this area do you understand it's really easy so it's almost 6.68 percent uh similarly you can take another example uh now if you have 
higher end and it's a, an, a farm employs 15 hundreds of employees during the given year the mean amount contributed charity derived per employee was 25.75 RMB so that's the mu equal to mu x bar the standard de deviation was this is sigma is 5.25 right what is the probability that the random sample of 100 employees and sample is 100 and uh, yields between probability of 25 less than x bar less than 27 now same thing you have n you have sigma so you can calculate sigma x bar and from there you can get the z z score so after getting the z score see the value in the table and you will get the certain value here so now this value is in percentage so you can multiply this with total 1500 implies to get the population to interpret it for example if i this if i use calculate this one and let's say it comes like uh, 3.2 percent example example right 3.2 percent or like um, 5.3 percent right so it means i at the end i have to multiply this one 0 0.032 times 1500 so that will give us to the population answer do you understand is it clear is this clear so that's it so now let's do the last thing now this one is a new thing for you maybe because now we're going to talk about the difference of means so I will also just let's first read it and then I will come to, I will move to the board. So the tensile strength of the certain type of a wire is normally distributed with the mean this one and standard deviation this one. What are the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a mean based on a random variable, a single uh, random sample of value of uh, this one is drawn from the population. What is the probability that the mean sample this one is easy, right? So now let me tell you the last topic uh, which is really important and then we can finish this lesson so for that i have to move back i have to move you back to the screen so uh, look at this carefully now let's say if we are divided we have two groups right instead of a single group instead of a single group uh, before that we were having we were using we were talking about the single group now if we consider we consider two groups like for example group one and group two both are normally distribution distributed group one and group two and both are normally distributed so in this case what will be the probability of the difference of the sample means right so let's say a mu one in group one mu one is given like um, 60 and sigma one scale is given 100 and n1 this is the information of uh, one, first group and similarly the information of the second group mu2 equal to 50 uh, sigma square equal to 121 and n2 is 11. now these two are different groups not the same group and this information is given now what is the probability that the difference of two sample means from different population will lie between this number x bar 1 minus x bar 2 how to solve this question then is less than 40 now we are interested in this one now 
in this case, these are given, this case, this is given, right? So this is, we are talking about the difference of the means of two population. For the difference of the mean, what we will get, we will have difference z. z our z-score will change here. So what will be the, our z-score here? So in this case, you just use the same thing. You use x bar min minus x bar 2 as one thing, and then minus mu not mu 1, mu x bar 1 minus x bar 2 divided by sigma x bar 1 minus x bar 2. So the mean of a difference of the samples and the variance of a difference of a sample mean. That's you need to calculate. And how to calculate that? And then rest is same. So we need to, this is given. Yeah, this is between 8 and 14. This is given 8 minus 14. Uh, x bar 1 is 8 and x bar 2 of the other population is 14. So this is given. What you have to calculate, you have to calculate this one. You have to find out this one. That's the thing. Now, what according to the definition, uh, what will be the mu x bar 1 minus x bar 2? This is simple, mu 1 minus mu 2. Because mu of x bar 1 is also mu and and the other one is also mu. So this is given. So that's really simple one. We can calculate it from here. Mu1 and mu2 are given. For example, in this case, it is um, mu1 minus mu2 is 10. Right? So we can just put it here 10. So our z score will be uh, 8 minus 14 is minus 6 minus 10. What is the formula for this one? Now remember to understand this one. So sigma x bar one minus x bar two is equal to because we know that this one, simple sigma square, equal to sigma square upon n, right? So here, it will be sigma 1 square upon n1 plus sigma 2 square upon n2, right? And if you calculate sigma x bar 1 minus x bar 2, then it will be under root sigma 1 square upon n1 plus sigma square 2 upon n2. So now you have all the values here. So sigma 1 square is 100 and 1 is 10. So it will be 10 plus 121 by 11. It will be 11. So 11 plus 10, 21. It should give you the root of 21 will be the sigma x square. So once you have all this value gathered, put in this and you can find out the difference. Now, if we convert this into the graphical form, what how are we going to do that? It's simple. So this is mu of x bar 1 minus x bar 2, which is equal to mu 1 minus mu 2, right? And here is x bar 1, and here is x bar 2 x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And we are interested in this region. So if we standardize it, this will be 0. And whatever the value of z1 calculate correspondingly is this one. So you calculate this one plus you calculate this one and you will get the answer. Right? So that's about the standardized uh, about the difference of the mean. Is it clear? So that concludes the lesson. Now, if I share the screen again and take you to the, because this ends this chapter.
So if you see the table or the book, now you are able to do most of the sections in this because I already try to make you understand. So let's have a glance. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, sampling distribution, you know all of these things. Now, on the, it should be on the, your finger of your tips. Uh, sampling distribution of the mean, the unbiased property of a sample means. We have already talked about this. Standard error of the means. We know, talked about this. Sampling from normal distribution, normally distributed population. That's we already talked in details how to get the z-value of a sampling distribution of the mean. And to solve this, uh, how is the standard error of the mean? So we have now this one, n is 100. Sample size from this, it's easy now to, for you to calculate, right? If you select this, what is the probability of this? So now you can solve all of the examples and the means and the questions if you understand the concepts. This is example again and again another example. Show the distribution of the time takes to fill order as, as possible chain through this and this 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 table this uh, is given. So you using the same table you brought made the sample. So that's the sample you have made and now you just find out because we already have done this by using the simple example of 16 sample means. So he did the same thing, histogram of a mean service, time of n equal to 2, and this is n equal to 15. So you see, as the n increases, it becomes more normally distributed. Right, so here n is 30, it's even further normally distributed. So that's what uh, we are talking about, um, sampling distribution of the proportion. Ah, that's that's we left. So it's also it's really easy. Number of uh, uh, items having the characteristics of interest uh, divided by sample size. That's the proportion which we also defined with the row, right, or p. Um, so here the this will be the p into one minus because here we are looking for the likelihood. So this pi is actually p. Is p is the probability of success and 1 minus p is q. So here the variance is about uh, sigma standard deviation is about p and mi 1 minus p upon which is pq upon n. So that's it. So once you get this value, so you will be given as a probability which is p and the uh, probability of success you have to you, you can easily get the probability of uh, failure q and here, P is a uh, proportion is X upon N, number of items having the characteristics of interest upon a source, total sample size. And if you have this value, it's really easy for you to calculate this Z value, right? So just put the value here and uh, P minus p p the probability of success divided by variance of this. So take the example. and it will be easy for you. So that's all for this sampling distribution. So and in the midterm exam, you will be having questions until chapter seven. And while next Tuesday, we will uh, start the confidence interval. We have three more lessons, uh, three more topics to cover. What are those topics? Let me tell you if I can have. Uh, so one, we will do the confidence interval, second, then we will also cover yeah then we will also go for the hypothesis testing one sample and then two sample in nova that's it uh, so that's what we're going to do in this course and later on, oh, we will, uh, because this is enough for you to, for this course. Let me see the, 
analysis of variance this will, we will try to finish this one as well that's it so we will not gonna go further for uh chi -square. We, 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 we won't be doing that if we will see if we have time to we will talk about the non-parametric te test that's the maximum we will cover in this a lesson like three more lessons or like two more like until 11 uh three or four but we're gonna finish this one so it's not gonna be it's, it's gonna be really easy for you because uh it's not that difficult